Now, after a weekend of star-studded fundraisers and lavish parties with her friends on the West Coast and Hollywood, well, Kamala Harris finally found the time to tour some damage in the Southeast. And meanwhile, Kamala likely regrets picking fellow radical leftist Governor Tim Walz as a running mate. The joy seems most definitely gone after last night's debate. Now, we know why the Harris campaign, you know, keeps Walz very far away from the media. He doesn't do interviews. We know why, because he can't. The governor is a complete and total, well, frankly, buffoon. He is in way over his head, kind of like she is. He is way out of his league. And Walls looked like a deer in the headlights, so visibly nervous. He did not have command of the facts. He seemed ill-prepared. He said some pretty weird, bizarre things. Aren't many people, you know, that call themselves a knucklehead in the middle of a debate or brag about being friends with school shooters? Take a look. Governor Walls. You said you were in Hong Kong during the deadly Tiananmen Square protests in the spring of 1989. But Minnesota Public Radio and other media outlets are reporting that you actually didn't travel to Asia until August of that year. Can you explain that discrepancy? Give yeah, well, and to the folks out there who didn't get at the top of this, look, I, uh, I grew up in small rural Nebraska, a uh, town of 400, town that you rode your bike with your buddies till the streetlights come on, and I'm proud of that service. Now, look, my community knows who I am. They saw where I was at. They, look, I, I will be the first to tell you, I have poured my heart into my community. I've tried to do the best I can, but I've not been perfect, and I'm a knucklehead at times. I will say more than anything, Many times I, uh, I will talk a lot, I will get caught up in the rhetoric, um, but being there, the impact it made, the difference it made in my life, I learned a lot about China. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this, so I, I will just, that's what I've said. I think another word for that is called lying. And he didn't, by the way, have to even answer why he wants feminine products in boys' bathrooms or gender-affirming care for children without parental consent. Uh, his uh, bizarre position on abortion, yeah, he lied about abortion. We'll get to that. His legal driver's licenses for illegal aliens in the country. Free college for illegals also. Oh, and did I mention free sex change operations and amnesty, too? On the other hand, J.D. Vance, senator from Ohio, he was a rock star last night. Upbeat, confident, detailed, smart, compassionate. He looked, totally looked competent. Uh, and this was another three-on-one debate with two very liberal, left-wing, arrogant, pompous moderators who were clearly trying to tip the scales in Tim Wall's favor. Almost every question tainted with Democratic talking points. There was a question about climate change before any mention of the economy or illegal immigration. And despite promising not to fact-check the candidates, well, the moderators, why play by the rules? They constantly attempted to insert their own so-called facts after answers only from J.D. Vance. In the end, it didn't matter. Vance was able to rise above it, call them out. On X, people even joked that Tim Walls looked ready to vote for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance after last night's performance. I'd like to agree with Senator Vance on that, which was pretty funny. And following the debate, when J.D. Vance headed to the spin room to answer more questions, Tim Walls, well, he scurried off to grab some pizza, need a little comfort food, where he tried very hard to avoid any and all questions about his horrific debate performance. Take a look. Governor, you said you become friends with school shooters during the debate. Can you clarify what you meant on that? Can you clarify what you meant when you said you'd be friends with school shooters? Why did you say you were in Hong Kong when, when reports say you weren't? I'll take the uh, school, sho sho school shooter special, please. It's so bizarre. Today in Pennsylvania, when asked again to clarify his comments about being friends with school shooters and his bizarre word salads about one of his many trips to China, his outright lying, he still struggled to come up with a simple answer. Take a look. And look, you've got to see me. These folks know me. I'm super passionate about this. The question come up about school shooting, we're talking about everything except school shootings. And I sat as a member of Congress with the Sandy Hook parents, and it was a profound movement. David Hogg is a good friend of mine. You have seen me do this. I was talking about being people where there are school shooters. 
Yeah, look, I have my dates wrong. I, I was in Hong Kong and China in 1989. Um, move from Hong Kong into China. It was profound for me. That was the summer of democracy. Looks like John Fetterman. Is that him buying them? Yeah, he wanted no part of that. Smart move on his part. Now, when a Democrat is facing critical questions from the state-run media mob, you know it was a horrible night. As it turns out, Tim Walls has a lot of trouble when it comes to telling the truth. Remember last night he lied about Project 25. 25. He called it a Trump plan. Trump has nothing to do with it. Lied about a scary new abortion registry that Trump and Vance do not support. Lied about his own position on abortion and is radical. Yeah, uh, you can have abortions up to the moment of birth, and then there's that little pre uh, post birth position that he did take in that bill. That's just the fact. He also told some egregious lies about the border. Walls actually wants you to believe that illegal crossings are down under Biden and Harris, which, as you can see from that little chart there, you see that big spike increase? Yeah, that's a total lie fabrication also. He lied about taxes, pretending that only the wealthy would pay more under Harris and Walls, when in reality, it would be the middle class that would be hit the hardest if the Trump tax cuts are allowed to expire. Even fake news CNN, they were forced to admit the obvious. Take a look. Vance, clearly, I think it needs to be said, clearly the more experienced debater, the slicker speaker. J.D. Vance came to this debate to land a bunch of punches, and he did. He landed a lot of punches in between all the niceties and all, and all of that. And the thing that, that really stood out to me was that Tim Walz did not seem prepared for it. I think the lack of interviews that he has done with national media, with local media, it showed. He needed more reps. Two issues driving the campaign right now are Harris has a big deficit on the economy, Harris has a big deficit on immigration, and Republicans were happy tonight and Democrats a little bit nervous that it, on those two issues, Vance carried it. I mean, it's pretty clear uh, Vance outclassed Walls tonight. I mean, I was watching this and all I could think of was, man, Walls is so in over his head. And while fake news CNN is grappling with reality, the far-left lunatics at MSDNC well, it was an absolute fit of hysteria. It was funny for all the wrong reasons on their part. They lost it. Take a look. It's the audacity. I, 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 yeah. I agree with you that we're in year nine, and no one knows how to cover the audacity. Mm -hmm. The audacity is, it, is that someone should have said, stop it, stop, stop. <laughs> Are you effing kidding me? And they should have, they should have dropped that F-bomb, right? I mean, they should have just... We, this is a debate. This may be the only chance people have to see the difference. And instead, I mean, I'll go back to my toothpicks. J.D. Vance just put one little toothpick on top of the other and said, and I'm for this, and I'm for this, and I'm so sorry those women died. They died because of Donald Trump. And so I think that the people who want the fist fight are the base of the Democratic Party. Mm. Democrats want to see someone get up there and give a knuckle sandwich to Donald Trump. That's what they want. But that is not the group of people who need this debate. I think they might want to consider a free Xanax for the host at MSDNC. And, of course, MSDNC's liberal viewers can always, always count on America's number one tinfoil hack conspiracy theorist, Rachel Maddow, to lie straight to their faces and protect them from any and all truth. And last night, she delivered big time, once again proclaiming a great victory for Tim Walls. Only one in the country that thought that, but take a look. I think the big picture takeaway from this is that one of these candidates is much slicker than the other, is a much more practiced, kind of professional debate style speaker, and the other candidate won. Hillbilly elegy, really? Anyway, that's almost as believable as our year and year long obsession with the Russia hoax, the Russia hoax, the Russia hoax. Meanwhile, Politico was also serving up some truly insane propaganda. They actually claimed that Wall's wide eyed, deer in the headlights look of sheer terror and panic was actually a sign of passion and intensity. Wow, they had to stretch to make that one up. And, the, you know, at the same time, by the way, the same Politico reporting that J.D. Vance's beard is triggering to women in America, quote, conveying aggression and opposition to feminist ideals. Wonder who they're voting for. 
But if you really need any more evidence that J.D. Vance crushed Tim Walls during last night's debate, take a look at this headline from the New York Times. Quote, Vance's dominant debate performance shows why he's Trump's running mate. Mark my words, this will have an impact on what is a very close race. As Senator Vance pointed out competently last night, at leadership matters. And by the way, after nearly four years under Biden and Harris, are you better off than you were four years ago? Is the economy better off? Are the borders better off? Are your towns and cities safer? Uh, how do you like paying a dollar plus more per gallon of gasoline? And how do you think we're doing on the world stage? How is that war in Europe going? We're on the verge of a complete, you know, breakout of war in the Middle East. We know that Harris is incompetent, and it looks and it feels like nothing but incompetence. You're not better off than you were four years ago. Our country is far worse off. The world is a far more dangerous place. And under Donald Trump, in spite of their predictions of the death of democracy, well, everything was better. We didn't have war in Europe. We didn't have war in the Middle East. We didn't have Iranian mullahs and their proxies, you know, creating havoc and, and shooting off hundreds of ballistic missiles. Their proxies and, and Iran themselves were bankrupt. Donald Trump held them in check. They were probably about on the verge of going under. But under Biden, well, billions of dollars were unfrozen and deposited in the accounts of the Iranian mullahs. The Islamic Republic made billions and billions thanks to Harris and Joe Biden after their sanctions were either eased or they just simply turned a blind eye to them and never enforced them. Harris and Biden made Iran rich again so that they can then foment murder and terrorism worldwide, which we've been watching. In 2021, Biden-Harris, they even lifted sanctions on two Iranian missile producers. And, of course, they brought back that idiotic Iranian deal, which puts them on a path to becoming a nuclear power. And now our closest ally in the Middle East, Israel, they are now fighting a multi-front war while Iranian missiles rain down on Tel Aviv and all throughout Israel. And the idiotic Biden-Harris plan to appease the Iranian mullahs has been an abject failure. But to this day, they refuse to change tactics. Here's Biden. You know, here they got attacked with nearly 200 ballistic missiles, a massive escalation in what has been going on. They're not using their proxies, Hamas in the south, Hezbollah in the north, the Houthi rebels. No, they're going with ballistic missiles straight at Israel. But what's, uh, what's Joe's advice? What it's always been. Please show restraint. Please show restraint. No, don't attack their nuclear facilities. Uh, I promised them they could, they could pursue nuclear power. Take a look. Obviously, Iran has gone way out of, I mean, it's way off port. We're going to put together a joint statement. It hasn't been done yet. It'll be done before too long, probably, by the time we land. And uh, there's going to be some sanctions imposed on Iran. We can support an attack on Iran's nuclear sites by Israel. The answer is no. The answer should be yes. You know, sanctions, what, like the ones you lifted, you're going to put a couple of them back in place? Here, here's what the United States of America, if we had strong leaders, what their message would be. Now, Joe hasn't spoken to Prime Minister Be Benjamin Netanyahu. Donald Trump has. But the message should be clear, unambiguous. Go win your war against those radical Islamic terrorists that attacked your country, murdered your citizens, kidnapped them, raped them, tortured them, and beheaded them. Even if Kamala doesn't ever want you to say the words radical Islamic terrorism or illegal alien. Now, if Biden Harris get their way, it's only a matter of time before the world's number one state sponsor of terror will start producing nuclear war warheads, and the odds I would bet are very high they would use them. How does that benefit anybody in the world? How does that contribute to global peace? The Harris Biden administration is actively putting our country and the entire world at risk with their appeasement policies that are at the very least naive, but far worse sinister in my view. It's not too late to reverse course. In 34 days and sooner, for those of you that vote early, you can right the ship. You can get our country back on track. You can restore America's role as the leader of the free world. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.